a great voice. <laughs> Hey, let's get going. David walks away. Hmm? David walks away. Yeah, of course. Well, he's, he's showing off his woodworking tools now. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, welcome, everyone. Calling the meeting to order. I think we all know each other here pretty much. So we don't need any introductions that I can see, unless anyone feels otherwise. Thank you all for being here. Um, first order of business, approval of the agenda. We have a move to approve the agenda. We have one late item. One. Okay. Introduction of late items. I saw an approval there. Yep. Just one late item. Yep. Um, a submission from uh, 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 Union Steamship. Noted. Thank you, Stan. Under public comment. Yeah. Where is that going under? Actually, I said public comments, um, and we will be reading to it, but it may go in with the attachments of submissions in the application to 4.1. But it'll be, and for the purpose of this meeting, will be addressed at. Uh, Section three. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Thank you. And I think we are therefore approved the agenda. Uh, not yet. Second ballot paper. All in favor? Betty, you in favor? Sorry. Yeah, she seconded, I think. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff. Moving on. Uh, adoption of minutes. We have a move to adopt the minutes. Thank you, Betty. All in favor? Wonderful. Public comments. We have Andy Lieber here from the yep. game ship. Perfect. Thanks, Andy. Go right ahead. Okay, we would like to submit the following letter. Um, we've been asked to read out as, unfortunately, we did bring this in rather late to the entry table. Um, this is a letter for the Advisory Design Panel, 8th of November 2003. Here, panel members, Tippy's Cookhouse. The proposed development of the former Rusty Bistro is a more than welcome update to what has become a rather tired and neglected building. Its proximity so close to the effective gateway to Bowen obviously attracts tremendous attention. The plans thus far are both appealing and in keeping with the generally accepted traditionalist aesthetic of the Stunco commercial community. We do, however, have several concerns based on our 30 years experience of food service in this immediate area. The proximity to open park areas and the less intensive urban development that characterise this end of the code have created an individual dynamic that does impact businesses. Title, garbage area. We note the proposed garbage area appears to be open plan, no roof, walls, access door, etc. This raises a number of points to be considered. A, the summer heat and direct sun will cause organic waste within these bins to ferment and create noxious smells. These smells will immediately affect the domestic residents immediately adjacent, ferry foot traffic, residents and tourists, those enjoying the Union Steamship roadside lawn area, staff and customers of the Union Steamship ice cream store, users of the Lady Alexandra Promenade Boardwalk, Atom B, these bins and their smells, irrespective of heat or not, will prove an attraction to the skunk and rat population. The former has proven to be resilient even in the face of our contractual pest control company. This is both a health hazard and will, due to its location, cause issues for both dog walkers and late evening and early morning ferry foot passengers unfortunate enough to cross paths with the skunks. The outside dining area with inevitable food scraps will further compound the issue by providing the local crow, pigeon and seagull population already drawn to the exposed garbage bins with further daytime sources of food. 
Thanks to Typhon D. These bins will need to be washed after each emptying and the contaminated water flush down drains correctly and not simply allowed to run into ground, as this would provide further food waste for the skunk and rat populations. An enclosed garbage bin area with a roof and rodent-proof doors is the most suitable solution in our opinion. The alternative is for these bins to be emptied daily. The boardwalk garbage bins at Union Steamship are monitored each day during summer and emptied and washed. Every night, the organic waste from Dot Morgan's is transferred from a rodent-proof wheel container into our secure large metal garbage bin in the Union Steamship car park. New title, Fence Line. We know there has been discussions on the subject of removing the property line fence between Tippy's Cookhouse and the Union Steamship roadside lawn area. We would oppose this as the fence is a logical property demarcation and prevents confusion. This lawn area is maintained for the enjoyment of users of the Princess Alexandra Boardwalk, passing through to Crippin Park and the Union Steamship property. Should you have any questions on the above, we would be more than happy to discuss these further. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, discussion will hold till after. I'm allowed to ask questions. Wants to ask questions, I think. Uh, well, this is kind of a general question, but what are the bylaw requirements for garbage enclosures, commercial garbage enclosures? He's searching up bylaws. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, we have. In the, in the Stunt Cove area, we have design guidelines for garbage enclosures, but more about shielding. Yes, right we have front view. Front view, right. right. We have the real property maintenance bylaw that talks about accumulation of rubbish. And like, you know, if you're creating a noxious environment, it sort of triggers those criteria. Yeah. But it's not very specific. It's it? not very specific. Like there's no threshold. Like, property. like if somebody is, you know, not emptying a dumpster and it's overflowing and it's, you know, whatever, it's then, then it probably qualifies. Yeah. But I don't know what the threshold would be if it's just somebody saying, well, your garbage area is, is smelly. And they say, well, it's cleaned every, you know, we empty it. They come and empty it and never, it's never over full. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's one of those interesting situations where it's in every commercial owner's best interest to have a decent plan for dealing with their garbage. But at the same time, if for whatever reason they're, they're not on top of it, it affects everyone. And um, skunks are not something we dealt with not too long ago. And in some ways they're worse problem than rats. <laughs> Had two run-ins today with skunks, one this morning and one 15 minutes ago. Like I'm just looking like a real property maintenance bylaw. The owner of occupier of real property shall maintain the property in a manner that averts any risk to public health and safety, maintain it to prevent it from becoming unsightly, and not permit rubbish or noxious, offensive, or unwholesome matter of any kind to collect or accumulate on or around such property. Seems like the trigger there is really the health to the public. Yeah. And attracting rodents and skunks is not yeah. healthy for the public. Yeah, I think that if, it, if that was the, then that would be something we'd be looking, I guess, to enforce at that point, if it's, yeah. like, if it's, if it's a public health and safety risk. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to interject with what my plan actually yeah. is. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm obviously no stranger to dealing with these issues myself, having run a, a, a well, I've run restaurants for many, many years, and, and uh, as well on Bowen Island, and, for anybody who wants to observe how I maintain my current, um, you know, situation at the pub, they're welcome to drop behind the pub and take a look at it. It's, it's, it's um, very organized. It's um, there's uh, everything's tidy. The garbages are uh, contained and maintained. Um, so it, it does provide a good example as far as how I uh, um, deal with with my garbage. Uh, and there is, you know, that is an issue with restaurants. Um, it, it's, I'm, you know. It is the only place uh, on the property that I can um, uh, provide uh, um, storage for for garbage, um, and yeah, the the containers will be lidded and uh, locked up. As far as I mean, not locked, but they will be um, it, it, rodents and skunks and uh, crows and um, critters will not be able to get into the containers. They will be cleaned on a regular basis, 
my plan wasn't initially to put in a uh, cover. Um, in, in fact, I'm intentionally trying to leave that area as open as possible because there will be some future work needed to be done on the neighboring firewall that will require a fair bit of access. And I'm, I don't want to um, prohibit that. Um, and I also just want to note that, you know, I, this this property has been a restaurant for 35 years and and I, I you know I've got some pictures of what that garbage area looked like before I took it over <laughs> and I don't think it was well maintained at all and I, I don't know that there was problems I mean I'm sure that there probably was rodent problems uh, but I don't know if there was any complaints previously about smell or odor or things like that escaping that area or being an issue um, but it is not, uh, I'm not creating a new garbage area. This is something that has been there for quite a while, but it is certainly something that I'm very conscious of and will work with my neighbors to the best of my ability to ensure that this is, uh, is not an issue for, for them or for their guests or for my guests for that matter. Um, you know, my initial plan was to try to um, create something that was less uh, visible um, but again, the, the, that brings the fence into question, which uh, um, doesn't, uh, um, th there's no plan to, to, to change that at this point. So, I mean, if that helps, uh, I think it might be something where um, hopefully if I can put together a, a solution and, and show my neighbor that it is going to be something that I can manage uh, quite effectively, uh, that should hopefully um, quash some of the issues. Yeah, Glenn, thanks. I appreciate that. It, it does help. Um, I also think that the design panel, in essence, is to review, if you have a design related to how you're enclosing it, to review that. But we don't, can't really weigh in on health issues or, um, you know, how, how, how the operations work for you. So I think with respect to aesthetics, um, you know, when, when, if you've got something to show us that, that, that indicates what you're planning to do around that garbage, then that would be good to see. But I think otherwise we, we were really trying to stick technically to what it is that has to do with the design panel. So, but it's, but it's certainly good to know that you do have a plan in place for what you're going to do. Yep. Anything else you want to say right now, Daniel, was there, do you want to move into Presenting this or Drew? Yeah, I think Drew has a yeah. presentation for his report. Great. Perfect. <laughs> it's on that one. Okay. Yes, so applicant Glenn Cormier has applied to construct a covered patio as well as interior and exterior renovations to the existing restaurant building at 433 Bowen Island Trunk Road. Property uh, is owned by his company, 141-9792BC Limited, and the restaurant on site is intended to be reopened under a new business license and branding. Being in the village revitalization development permit area, uh, this proposal triggers a review for form and character. This report and discussion is to provide an assessment of how closely the proposed covered patio addition and restaurant renovations comply with the Snug Cove design guidelines to guide the discussion of the advisory design panel. In breaking down the nine sections of the Snug Cove design guidelines, we've identified 28 individual topics by which to analyze the proposed development. The proposal is found to be substantially compliant, having complied with 19 of the topics, with only two non-compliant and six topics being unapplicable. The two areas of non-compliance were simply based on the fact that the existing building is not mixed use, uh, nor multi-story, which is encouraged in the dense Snug Cove area. Overall, the proposed patio changes will offer more engagement with the public passing by through the provision of picnic benches outside of the commercial patio area. The proposed boulder and planter barrier to replace the fence will beautify the property while maintaining a barrier. The aesthetic updates to the building will largely uphold and maintain the rustic look of the building with the proposed patio covering being a wood structure as well as wood siding on the walls and around doors. Muted blue paint color and signage fits the marine character of the area. Staff are largely satisfied with the design as proposed and feel that the restaurant revitalization and the patio improvements will be a welcome addition to the streetscape and will add to the pedestrian draw of the row of businesses along Trunk, Trunk Road. Significant design changes were made in the early stage of the application after the initial design was reviewed, and it was found that the original proposal of a glass and aluminum atrium addition was not consistent with the arts and crafts aesthetic uh, encouraged for the area. As well, there were implications for sewer demand and parking requirements that made the proposed addition unfeasible. The proposal was changed from an enclosed glass and an aluminum atrium to a similar size wood frame covered patio area. 
which would provide some shelter to patrons in less favorable conditions, but it's more in line with the natural rustic arts and crafts aesthetic encouraged for the area. After reviewing the application to other Bowen Island, Department, Bowen Island Municipality Departments, several comments were received from the Manager of Environment and Parks Planning. The applicant is encouraged to use native and drought tolerant plant species in the planters and that the planters are self-watering. Mature cherry tree in the patio area should be protected during construction and the roots should not be disturbed, at least the drip, drip line. The structure shown around the tree will protect the tree roots and ensure it can get water. However, the tree may not survive if the, if the roots and trunk are not buried deeper than they were previously. So the applicant is asked to use caution when installing that structure. Uh, staff finds the proposal to be in line with the intent of the Snug Cove design guidelines and recommends the advisory design panel supports development permit application DP 2023-0173 on 433 Bowen Island Trunk Road. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> Get new glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments, panel members? Can we put the pictures up again? Sure. Maybe the last one? Just as that one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a comment in the feedback about taking down the fence and putting planters instead. Opens it up quite a bit. I actually like it. Do I go up to a previous one, Drew? I think you see it better. Look at that there. That one. Yeah. Thanks, Betty, for that. No way. We'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Sue Ellen. Um, thanks. So my, uh, I, I'm um, uh, got a question about the fences, not the um, the boundary, which I think is is fine as much as my <laughs> input is valuable. But I'm I'm referring to the view lines and the new six foot fence that's going back there. Is that a higher fence? And would that intrude further into the sight line from the old general store? Or not? Did you have a look at that? Let's see. Um, Somewhere I saw that it was a new. Yeah. Six foot fence. Yeah. yeah. In that yeah. first. Yeah. Yes. Is it higher than than the current one. I believe it is. Maybe. Be but there might be ask. buildings and fences behind. I don't know. My yeah. comment is just um, I'm glad to see it looking uh, more open there. Um, uh, looking at the, the view cone kind of the view corridor, view cones idea uh, in the uh, guidelines, design guidelines. And um, it's just over, over time, it seems to me, uh, without measuring it, that there's more fences and very visual barriers that are creeping into that uh, guideline. I'm not sure that it's all buildings or building height. Um, so if that's something that... Um, can be addressed, that would be great. But on the other hand, I understand you got to shield the garbage area. <clears throat> so. There's also a fence maximum, I think, in the bylaw. I don't recall what it is. Is it 2.5 meters? 2.5? Yeah, so it's quite, it's quite tall. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, not that that's, you know, that, that's more of a technical. This is more of a neighbor to neighbor, I think, relationship and, and a view corridor. Like, well, I'm just looking at the design guidelines and yeah. it, uh, I'm appreciating it being a little more open there for view and the feeling of a waterfront. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, and I'm not sure which buildings or fences it is. I don't think it's, it's not that building, um, but the, it, there's just gradually been sort of more visual barriers over time, incrementally, bit by bit, seem to be creeping in so that from the front doors of the library, you can't see down the board wall. Maybe you never could, but I just uh, wanted to flag <laughs> that because I don't, I didn't measure anything, but I, I think there's more separating barriers and things, and it may not be this proper. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Will. Could, David, could I call you on that? Do, you, do you mind? Uh, sorry, who was that? I don't see you in front of me. <laughs> sorry, that's Glenn. That's me. Yeah, again, Glenn, go ahead. Um, yeah, just um, just in, in follow up to that. Um, the, so the six foot fence that I denoted um, is the, the intention initially is to um, to to hide the ugliness of the of the receiving area closest to the building where it says new six foot fence there by the enclosed area. 
the around the propane area, the intent was to obviously um, again hide the propane tank and in, in the, um, the the works kind of area back there. But in 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 keeping with the fact that the property line fence is is likely going to stay in place, um, and and that's that's a barrier to the garbage area. My intent was to bring that level of fence, the six foot fence, down, step it down uh, in that courtyard seating area, so it joined up with the what's currently a four foot fence along the property line. So it it, it will look um, uh, a little bit more continuous um, rather than it being just a six foot wall. And um, j just to note that that was actually the exact fence line that was previously there. So there was a six foot fence in that um, space almost following that exact same line uh, that we tore down that was old and rotten. Um, so it was always that way. Um, and I'm just replacing that fence that was previously there. But my intent is to try to tie it into the fence line along the property and to make it um, less of a barrier looking. You know, there are, there are certain ways that we can we can improve the look of a fence, whether it's uh, plantings in front of it, whether it's, uh, you know, um, artistic uh, endeavors to try to improve the look of the fence, but it's it's certainly top of mind for me as well. But the, the main part of the six foot fence would be around the receiving area, the enclosed area by the building there that I'd like to try and keep that relatively hidden. Um, there's not much of appeal to look back there. And that's you, past that is the firewall. So the firewall extends past the propane tank as well. So as far as sight lines go, um, looking from the library across, you wouldn't see much up until the point where it says the garbage area there where there's three bins along the firewall. That's pretty much where the, the sight line begins. And I'd like to step that fence down to the level of the current four foot fence on the property line. So it says new six foot fence and I don't know what step the fence down to the current four foot fence. Yeah. I'm not, what do you mean? Well, it may start at six feet around the pro propane tank. And by the time it gets to the, the fence along the, the um, property line, it could be lowered to that oh. level. Okay, thank you. And one more question is just the um, uh, where the three garbage, uh, garbage areas are, that gray line along the back, that's what you're referring to as the firewall? That's correct. And what were you, changes were you thinking of doing there? Or is that later? Along the firewall, I don't have any plans for that. As I say, right now I'm leaving, I'm purposefully leaving that area open because uh, in discussions with my neighbor, there will be some work that needs to be done in the future uh, for the firewall, and I'd like to leave it accessible. Thank you. That's then I just making sure I've got it right. Thank you. Glenn, a couple of questions, if you don't, um, if you don't mind, the, the, the gate you've shown along the property line is that gate for moving propane in and out, or is it for garbage, or is it for everything, or uh, it's for. It, it's it's just existing. Uh, I don't have plans for it. Um, currently, it's screwed shut. I don't think that that's a, it's an access point that my neighbors wish to uh, have open. I'm just showing it as a as a fact that it's, it exists. Okay. Uh, the retaining boulders. What what roughly is the grade change there from your property to the neighbors? So the reason a lot of the the the, um, the those retaining blocks were put in is so I could have some level areas to work with from the garbage area to the seating area because the property slopes quite dramatically from the sidewalk um, back towards the firewall of my neighbors. So in order for me to make it a functional space uh, in all areas, I need to retain some of the area and it's it's visible now. So that work has been done and it's easy to see what was done. Um, specifically, the neighbors wanted to make sure that no retaining was um, pushed up against the, the wood fences, obviously. Um, and to, to minimize the, any kind of um, additional uh, backfill against the firewall. So I've, I've respected that and, and tried to keep the garbage area lower. Um, obviously, it keeps it lower from, from sight. And then the courtyard seating will be at the level of the current patio. Um, so really, I'm just making the rest of the area level. Um, there will be a step down where the, where the public benches are because, again, it is a bit of a, uh, it's an odd way that the property ties into the um, sidewalk because the sidewalk also slopes down from um, one edge of the property along the sidewalk to the other. So I've got a, there, there's a little bit of um, uh, work to be done in regards to making sure that we have level surfaces throughout, if that makes sense. 
It, it certainly does. Um, my, my bigger question was related to the north-south existing fence line, what the variation is in grade between what you propose to have and what the lawn um, is at at your neighbors. Uh, I'm going to say maybe 12 inches. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought about a foot. Jeremy. Yeah, I have a question uh, <laughs> uh, to Glenn, maybe. Was there an intention to have a, uh, uh, a removable plastic skirt or cladding around the, the new patio, concrete patio area uh, during the uh, winter and shoulder seasons? Or was that always just going to be open? Well, my initial intent was to have it in a fully enclosed uh, atrium. Uh, so that I could I could utilize it as a three season seating area. The restaurant itself is quite small, and that was always my concern uh, with this um, th this business plan in, in regards to the um, the interior seating. And my intention was to try to increase that uh, seating capacity or utilize my capacity more on a three season basis. It was never to be a wintertime enclosure, but I was hoping to get a, a three season enclosure. What um, uh, with the, the 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 changes, the new design um, to remove the the, the glass and, and metal atrium has left me with a covered patio, which would be a wood frame patio with just a um, a polycarbonate cover over top of it. I would like to um, possibly put some heaters inside of it, but it would it does need to be open uh, on on three sides based on the fact that I currently also cannot increase my um, floor space. So it, um, it, it, I guess that's defined by the, the amount of enclosure. And I think you need 60% of your wall space to be open. So that's open basically. So this is a function of the regulations that you can't actually enclose it. Well, the regulations are tied to the sewer capacity. So it's it's uh, something that I have to wait that out. I understand. Would you consider? Oh, are you considering putting a uh, removable plastic? Uh, I know docks in their lower deck, below the the upper deck, they have a kind of a plastic skirt that they put on for the for the winter. Is is that an option there? Um. Uh you know, it, is it an option? Sure, it's an option. I, I don't know how that falls within the, the regulations, and it certainly doesn't provide me what I was initially hoping to get, which is a full, you know, that that atrium that I was looking to to put on would have been a, an interior space. Plastic uh, sheetings that drop down don't provide that. It, it gives you some protection against wind, mm -hmm. um, and it helps to keep your heat in, but it doesn't necessarily provide the same um, benefit that a, that a full uh, atrium enclosure would. Um, would I like to do it? Yeah, I would. I mean, anything that I can do to extend the season I can get out of that covered area would be fantastic as, from a business perspective. As I say, it's, it's getting harder and harder to, to figure out how to um, make a profitable space uh, when, when, when I'm limited with, with the, the, my ability to use my full capacity year round. And that was the challenge that I faced with the um, the sewer capacity issue. Yeah, it's uh, kind of unfortunate. I was thinking that it would actually be uh, uh, if you had a uh, sort of a divided wooden frame, divided lights as a as a walls. There would be certainly fit in nicely with the traditional demeanor. Yeah, um, and it would look very nice. It's unfortunate. Well, I think if we can build that that structure, the skeleton of the um, the the covering, uh, in such a way that uh, in the future, when when uh, the capacity of the sewer is not an issue, um, that it could become something where there could be a, a, an enclosed space that's still in keeping with the the design guidelines. I think that would be a great uh, uh, option for the future. Sure. Good thinking. David, you got anything, any comments? You're muted. Oh, muted. Okay, I'm back. Um, <laughs> was there the whole time, really. The, anyway, <laughs> the, uh, I think the design changes. It flows, it's open. 
all the comments people have made about the visual of it from the street, from inside, looking through into neighbors' properties and back through the cove, back to the general store. I think it works very well. I'm with uh, Jeremy as well. I wish that there was some way that that uh, covered patio could be more year round. But as Glenn says, that's that's the future. We'll figure out that as you go. Um, I am w interested to hear what might happen. It's probably in the future for the uh, firewall because being a longtime ADP member, I remember having to the discussion when that firewall went up. We did we we did the uh, the lattice on it so that something could grow up. But obviously, that's probably a fire risk now when you've got another something up against it. Is that what you're talking about, Glenn? Um, I never considered a fire risk with that with the, with the lattice on that firewall. It was never a, a thought that crossed my mind. For me, it was more about the the root system of the vines that had wow. overtaken my property and and were growing inside the building and and had created a lot of damage already. So when I discovered it, you know, um, as far as the amount of of growth that those vines had really overtaken the property, there was no question for me they had to come out. And unfortunately, um, it's created the the situation we have, and I know it's not uh, visually appealing at all i know um if my, my neighbors weren't uh, intending to deal with it immediately and and uh, I'm, I'm hopeful to be able to work with them to to figure out a solution for that but uh, all i know is when i was doing my excavation of the that property it was it was painfully obvious that those vines had to go um so they they were removed and this is what we're left with and i know that um uh, you know in in talking with my neighbors that they they do want to uh, take a, a pause and take a look at that firewall there is some cracks and some damage um the the, the lattice itself has been screwed in in such a way that they, by taking it off will it open up more holes into the firewall so i think they want to get uh, an engineer involved before they touch it and i i respect that um, so as I say, I'm, I'm doing my best to try and create a space that they can uh, work in when, when the time is right for them to deal with that. Um, I don't know anything further about what the end product of that wall will look like. And obviously this, this, this committee will, will be uh, kept up to speed on that, I'm sure. Oh, thanks. No, I was more commenting about the visual of that and as it changes, but I do understand. I remember old union cottages, well, in what we call the union, having the vines coming in so that it was that whole uh, Alice in Wonderland kind of thing in those cottages. So I know how that those vines can eat up a property and a house. Yeah. But overall, I'm very happy with how you've readjusted um, the design and um, I give it a thumbs up. There's okay. me. Okay. Thanks, David. Vince has had a hard time coming in. He's gotten in. Vince is joining us. He's over there. Hi, Vince. Oh, there you are. I kept an in, in, in oh, invalid meeting ID. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, par for the course these days. <laughs> so, how, how how long have you been there, Vince? Uh, a couple, only a couple minutes. Uh, I, I haven't been able to hear everyone's issues yet. Um, if you've had a chance to look at any of the paperwork and you have any comments right now. Uh, go ahead. Otherwise, maybe we'll just continue on and you can see how your learning curve increases. <laughs> yeah, go, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Vince. Um, David, to your point about the firewall, uh, so that's that's your neighbor's firewall, correct? Uh, the, the largest portion what? is there's a small uh, firewall that's attached to my building, which has it's actually recently been power washed and I, I do plan to paint it. Um, that's right next to the back door. So there's two firewalls, but the large one that has the um, the, the trellis still on it is the uh, marina's firewall. Gotcha. So what I, what I think I'm hearing is that at a later date, there will be a plan for how to deal with that firewall and we may see that come across our desks. Uh, uh, I'm not here to speak on that firewall uh, other than to say that's the impression I got from um, the marina is that, you know, unfortunately my timing to, to deal with the vines didn't coincide with their timing to be able to deal with the bare firewall and, and they're going to have to... Uh, uh, figure out a plan um, moving forward, and I'm I'm here to work with them on that, and and, and uh, you know on their time frame, 
Um, but it will require, obviously, uh, as they say, scaffolding um, and possibly engineers. Uh, so I'm trying my best to leave it as um, as accessible as possible. But the plan for it is really in their hands. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, Sue Ellen. I'm, uh, I just want to, I probably said it last time, but I'm really glad to see that the tree is remaining, the cherry tree. Partly just because it links it with the uh, with the nature all around and with the orchard, and uh, I just um, think that's great. It's good. I wanted to say something that was positive that I could uh, contribute because I'm not uh, a design person usually, uh, but I did want to mention that. And also, uh, just for staff, I found that the table um, laying out all the um, Design guidelines uh, uh, with your co table one. I thought it was really useful. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Yeah, and just so, just to follow up, that that tree was uh, it's it's an integral part of the design. I think to to me it 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 provides a, a great shade spot. Um, and I think it's been neglected, and I think I'm going to bring in an arborist to to give some opinions on it and on how to deal with it moving forward because I think it's uh it's it's an important tree to keep. I I, I want to make sure it's protected. Thanks, Glenn. Um, to Sue Ellen's point, that pie graph is something you can digest in about five seconds. And it was extremely helpful to just get the pulse of how the application has been looked at by staff. I thought that was really, really helpful. Yeah, it's the table, not the pie graph, but both together. Yeah, so it, I like the pie graph. Sense of, yeah. <laughs> staff have looked at all these you things like and I can them. match them up with the numbers. Uh, when you said section, I'm going, oh yeah, that's the part I just looked at in the design guidelines. So that was helpful, thank you. Yeah, and the definition be, you know, of, of those merits public, and what was not applicable was also really helpful to say, well, you can't do this because it's a one-story building, et cetera. Right. Yeah, thank you. Can I get clarity on the question if a will fire will work come back to this table? It's it's such a minor I mean I think yeah if like if the marina is doing sort of ongoing maintenance, it's not something that would rise to like yeah. a permit application. Yeah. If they're sort of come like, back and say they're going to uh sheet it in metal siding, which we've seen before, it might be something we comment on or do, or not. I mean, that's to me maintenance too. You're protecting something. So I don't know that it's a big change, but I you know, again, I'm, I'm not part of that. I just, uh, if it's just maintenance, is it maintenance? There you go. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, it's, it's concrete block cleaned up, painted or metal clad, um, or just part yeah. with another layer of concrete. Yeah. Stucco. Yeah. But given that it's not Glenn's firewall in the first place, uh, it's it's not part of this application. I, no. uh, I would understand, no. right? Yeah, I agree. That's right. Thanks. Um, is, does that add clarity? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, they don't need a permit, so. Yeah, no, okay. technically, it's, right. I think likely that's that sort of it's maintenance and fixing it up that it would, yeah, wouldn't come. To okay, good. Just good, good. Maintenance of the existing wall. Yeah. Great. It wouldn't trigger the whole problem. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I didn't think it would, but, but unless, unless a big sign was put on it. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, it's the materials, right? I mean, a big firewall like that could it be, um, it's not exactly arts and crafts, right? If it was metal clad, <laughs> so you know what, the design yeah. guidelines would kind of apply, but I, I, yeah, but that would be for something else, nothing to do with lens application. Certainly not. I to totally agree. Yeah. Just to answer the question, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it it wouldn't trigger design panel because it doesn't trigger an application. So that's that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, apologies if this has already been mentioned because I was late. Uh, uh, Glenn, was it uh, still the intention to have uh, a, a most of the, a, a big portion of the, that patio area uh, for uh, not necessarily be required to be uh, uh, restaurant uh, patron usage? It was open to 
uh, public to use? Is that still the case? Yeah, I mean, if you want to go back to the the, the floor plan, it does still show um, some, I mean, I put picnic tables in there. It could be park benches. It could be, what I'm looking to do is to really create more of an open sidewalk kind of feel to it. So okay. I'm looking to have that front portion. Um, the where it says like courtyard ceiling. Sidewalk. Yeah, and I really yeah. want to soften the corner there leading into the um, the marina. Um, I mean, that calls into question the fence, which we haven't discussed, but it does... Um, that that area there was intended to be more of a gathering place for people who wanted to sit down with their takeout coffee or lunch or people who are waiting for the ferry. One thing I've noticed about that property just in the time that I've had it during the the, the renovations is, uh, you know, I've got some crickety little wooden benches sitting out there and they are used daily mm -hmm. in the summertime. It, it's, a, it's a very common place for people to want to gather. There's some great overhangs on that building. Um, so people do, you know, kind of gather in that, around that area. And I thought opening up that space would be more welcoming um, towards mm -hmm. kind of rounding out the corner to the marina. Um, yeah. But again, that does call into other questions uh, in regards yeah. to that. Definitely. Yeah. Well, th thanks for answering my question. I'm happy to see that it's still mostly open like that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. It, it, it actually feels like a version of what the snug has. Yeah, those those benches are often wandered into by non patrons of the snug. So we need some wording. Yeah, oh, Sue Ellen. One more question is just um, um, maybe I missed it, but um, the the signs. Somebody mentioned signs as if uh, the the Tiffy's Cookhouse sign that I see in the images there is that within is it looks big to me, but. I don't know. Is it within the uh, guidelines for size of signs? We didn't have any guidelines on the size. It was just the, the character of them or the design. Uh, okay, it's just. Uh, and I'm speaking as a, a counselor here. I once had uh, plans come towards me uh, in front of us for approval for another uh, facility, and what I thought was a label on the drawing was actually the text that was to be on the side of the building and so i am um, i'm just asking about the size and whether it fits with our land use bylaw we do have a land use bylaw sorry land use bylaw regulations we'll make sure that it doesn't exceed thank you i i did Thanks submit a um a, a sign the diagram and plan for the sign i don't know if it made it to the package but um i can tell you that the sign that's that's proposed for the front of the building is a is a carved wooden sign in keeping with the design guidelines and it's round uh, 24 inches round. Thank you. Thanks, Clint. It, it can actually be seen on the projection. Yeah. Uh, you can see it on the, on the wall. Uh, can I show you sure? my screen? I don't have that presentation. So I just tried something sort of. Um, and then so I went to the maximum size, we allow up to two signs, a total area of three square meters. Which is quite substantial. That's, that's Much bigger. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. You. yeah. You can see on the wall there on the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but just a, a clarification, Glenn, what you're saying is that it's actually a round sign. It's not a square like you're seeing in the image. Yeah, that's just a cut and paste off of a white background. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, there, I, I can submit to the committee uh, a sign plan which shows what, it, what I've actually got there. If you see all the windows, um, and you can get a visual on it very easily. If you go down there, you'll see another opening that's the exact same size of the window. It used to be a chalkboard um, that the previous owner used to write up daily specials. But the, the actual size of that is the exact same size as one of the windows, but it's not a window. So I want to um, put the same shingle background behind the sign. So the sign will stand out from the blue uh, building on a backdrop of wood shingles, and it's a wood sign that's round. Below it will be a menu board uh, that will have a menu on it, obviously. Oh, that's great. <laughs> great. How yeah, wonderful. Do you need a question, Mike? I think we Here. need... I've just got... Um, a question, stuff. Sure, I've just got the... Um, draft. Yeah, get out. I'm kicking someone out. Yeah. Stop sharing. Get out of there. It's Drew. Do you want him to stop? Okay, get him out. Fingers out. <laughs> so 
So just we have support, not support, is the initial question. Sometimes our comments and criteria. Have comments or criteria? Um, anyone? Any panel members think we have comments or criteria? I, I can't think of any other than what we've discussed. I think we covered it, and I think we support yeah. it. Yeah. I have a question for the panel, which is just about the question of the fence between the properties. So Glenn has presented the plan without the fence. Obviously, we've heard from the neighbors, you know, concerns about that removal. Yeah. Um, and so what I was sort of thinking, formulating in my head was that, well, we, would have, we could approve the development permit without the fence. But essentially, it's like, but the fence could remain. Like, have it, so essentially, it's like the panel supports the design without the fence. But ultimately, knowing that, okay, well, it's a discussion between the neighbors. And so leaving it as like, you know, the panel would prefer, if this is the case, the panel would prefer it without the fence to be open. I but, think it looks better without myself, just the, uh, the planters, the rock raised, the planters, it draws a nice line. But <laughs> I say that. Yeah, and, and obviously there are, like if a neighbor wants to put up a fence, like retain an existing fence. Like it's not a question of like the neighbor wanting to put up a fence that's a development permit issue, but it's like it, the fence exists. Yeah. So the fence, what's going to, the neighbor's going to retain the fence. I guess I'm sort of asking, it's like, would the panel then say, well, we don't approve the development permit unless the fence is removed? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you only need a development permit for a fence if it is beyond your uh, property line and or uh, higher than six feet. Other than that, you don't need a development permit or anything. So to your point, one could approve this without a fence, but someone could put up a fence and the fence yeah. alone doesn't need a development permit. So right. looking for like a good yeah. fence. <laughs> like, like, to... I guess I'm saying like, you know, yeah. potentially in, in sub code, we couldn't say no, it's a development permit to put up a fence. Like if the panel approved a design with no fence, like an open and then they fenced it up later, we would say that's your violation of your, you know. I, I see, but, I see. But in this right. case, I guess we'd be saying, well, it's existing. They don't, nobody needs a development permit to keep an existing fence. And you'd be right. approving right. a design without it, but, but with a sort of recognition that it's like ultimately, I see. like between the two owners to. Uh, yeah, and, and to, contrary to that, you couldn't say to someone, you cannot take that fence out right. as part of your development permit. I, I'd like to just jump in and give an update in regards to that fence, because it is something that I have had discussions with my neighbor on. And I think we have an understanding, you know, obviously my preference is that the fence would come down and that was um, my hope, but uh, you know, they, they have their reasons for wanting it to stay. And, and we've talked through that and I respect their reasons and I, I don't want it to become an issue. Um, I I've shown my designs without it for the benefit of the, the committee. Um, to comment on if they wish, but I'm also planning to, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, um, you know, my designs are not contingent on whether or not there's a fence there or not. My, my plans are to move ahead. I will have, um, I'll, I'll have retention of my property uh, beyond the fence. I'll have planters uh, beyond the fence to, to, to the benefit of my patio. Um, so if, if one day that fence disappeared, um, it would just look like it does in that picture. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm kind of working um, around that, uh, keeping my neighbors in, in mind and, and understanding that, that they have um, their reasons as well. So, you know, I, I'm happy for the committee to leave it uh, to be amongst neighbors um, and we can work through uh, how to uh, keep that fence looking good and um, to the benefit of the, uh, the community as a whole. And I think that's that's fine. Um, my intent was to, <clears throat> if we can go back to the um, to the um, rendering that shows it, <clears throat> my my hope and intent was to, they've got a, a pergola there right on the corner, which um, kind of guides people onto the sidewalk. And the one thing I did want to do was to to remove the one section of fence that's within that pergola, and that's a again a discussion uh, amongst neighbors. Um, that it, it looks, and I, and I think even if I leave it for now, it will end up looking rather odd. My intention mm -hmm. was to, to make the sidewalk as open as possible um, and to make it a natural kind of 
soft corner rather than a hard abrupt end into the sidewalk when you come through that pergola so that's the the discussion i'm having with my neighbors right now if we can remove that one section that they, they would still like to keep it up but it it's something that i'd like to continue that conversation with them uh, and i don't think it's something that um if if this committee is, is okay with leaving the discussion amongst neighbors then we can leave it at that my intention uh, has always been to make that property more welcoming make the uh, approach up uh, Trump Road uh, more welcoming um, for the community, for the visitors. Um, but I think that I can work with my neighbors to to find a, a common ground when it comes to that fence. Um, you know, as I say, it's, uh, it's, you know, fences make good neighbors and I don't want to take that away necessarily. It's something that um, they have uh, reasons for wanting it and I have reasons for not, but I think we can find a common ground. That was well said. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it makes sense um, to lead the wording as it was initially put together in the draft and let neighbors be neighbors. <laughs> Assuming that can work out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're getting rid of that. Getting rid of not support. Simon. Period. Yeah. That's good. Can I? Yes, Sumela. Just to play devil's advocate, if we if we read what's there and pass that, um, then we're we're approving a design that doesn't have a fence. And so, just to remove any confusion, do we want to add the words with or without the fence between? Um, Whatever you want, whatever the words are between the the the, yeah, that's a good the neighbors that's a good point. field and yeah. the restaurant area. It documents probably what I would call the trickiest part of this. Yeah, so <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Is it for without the <laughs> I don't know. Does that help? Yeah. Affins. Affins. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. That's better. Don't put the controversial. Just leave okay. it. Just see if you're like. Yeah. Um, do do, but which fence? The the fence between um, existing fence. With the existing fence. Yeah, between the patio and the marina, or the courtyard. North north, north south fence How about between on the north patio and marina. On the east. property line fence. How about that east eastern property line? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be specific. Yeah. And about the patio, just eastern property line. And just and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Don't need the patio. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. I think it just makes it clear for everybody in the future. No, it's a really like good five point. years from now, people will be going, "What were they yeah. doing? <laughs> what was? I don't understand." <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be ready for a vote on this. I think we need a mover and a second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I move that that what is on the board there by Steph is the take it forward with the positive. Thanks, David. Seconder. Second. Thanks, Vince. Last discussion. Favors. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Carried unanimously. Okay. Do we have any questions? <laughs> I think we are at a point where we move to adjourn. Thank you, everybody. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Glenn. And you and Daniel, I appreciate the work. Oh, thank you, Andy. There is a question period. There yeah. Oh, yeah. And do, do the questions? Oh, okay. All right. I move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>